Neftali Santiago, drummer of Mandrill. Uh, my first album was Composite Truth, and I've been with the band since. The band moved to the West Coast to do two UA albums. After that, the last Mandrill album was actually in 82, and it was on a small label called Montage. Not too many people know about that album, but it's called Energize. And uh, what's happened now is a lot of rappers have sampled the band, and the list just goes on. It's Public Enemy, Ice Cube, Ice-T, EPMD, The Jungle Brothers, uh, 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 Smith & Wesson, it just keeps going on and on. And what's happened is, is the youth is just so hungry for, for like the real deal that they have to go to records to find it because there are no groups in the 90s going into the millennium. So they've really brought the band back. You know, you ask where the band has been for the last 20 years, we've been on vinyl. Now the band is being released on CD and we have a whole new generation of fans that want to see the band and that's what we're doing back now. Okay, well, let's go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Let's give us some history and just bring us back up to, to now and into the future. I mean, Millennium is a couple of years and, 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 and let's talk about the youth a little bit, what, what, you know, what's happening with that, how your music is affecting them. And oh. just bring us up from the early days to now. Well, if you listen to Mandrill lyrics, it wasn't just about get up and shake your booty, you know? The lyrics really have some deep, deep messages within them. And the youth identify with them. As we're going on this tour, we're talking to the youth, and they're saying, look, back in the 70s, I was going through a difficult time period, and I picked up your album, and I looked at the lyrics, and, and, and I felt the lyrics, and you helped me through a lot of difficult times. That message is coming across over and over and over again. And now that, that we have the web, it's a whole new generation that's, that's being inspired by the music of Mandra, you know. So how's the web influencing the music? Oh, in a big way, in a big way. Because what, it, what it's allowing people to, to do is to catch up to the whole Mandrill experience. So uh, what the Millennium look like for you guys? It looks very promising, very promising. You know, what's happening is, is the youth is bringing the band back. And in the Millennium, the band's just going to take up where we left off and just go right into it. Okay, um, there's no record you here. Okay. Hey Rick, let, let, let's go back to the early days of the Mandrill. How did you guys come up with that name? Mandrill came about uh, our drummer, our first drummer, Charlie Padro, uh, was walking through Central Park and saw this animal that just struck him. You know, he couldn't uh, take his eyes off the animal, and it looked as if no matter what angle you were looking at the animal from, the animal was staring right at you. He had to just some incredible magical eyes and in addition to that the animal had the red nose and the blue face striking striking features so he came back to to our rehearsal and and said hey man I saw this incredible looking animal you know called a mandrel so then we did some research on the animal and realized that uh, there were a lot of characteristics of the animal that that we related to number one he was African his base his foundation was the motherland and that, that was right, right at home with Mandrill. And then, secondly, they had a uh, family structure. They supported each other. They, they mourned the dead. They, they, uh, they loved each other. They, they protected each other. Uh, they were very peaceful, but you didn't want to mess with them. You know, if you mess with them, they, they, they'll take care of business, you see. So that related to, to where we came from, you know, Brooklyn and family and, and that whole deal. And, and it just seemed like a, like a perfect uh, representation of what we were all about. And then on top of that... There's a lot of you guys from a lot of different parts of the country. Um, how, talk about the diasporaness of you guys' music. Well, one of the, the fortunate things of, of, of the nucleus of the Wilson, uh, of Mandrill, the Wilson, the Wilson brothers, uh, was that we were born in Panama. And, and being born in Panama placed us in a very special place because Panama was considered the melting pot of the Caribbean and South America. Uh, Panama was the one country in the Caribbean where you would find uh, individuals from any country in Central America, any country in the Caribbean, any country in South America. There's no other country like that in that part of the world. 
Um, and people came to Panama because of the Panama Canal. When the canal was being built, that was the land of opportunity. So folks came from all over and they stayed and they brought their culture with them. And we were very fortunate in that we were part of that. Our grandparents came from, from the Caribbean, came from Panama, came from Barbados and, and Jamaica. Uh, and that's how they got there. And then they stayed. And, and we grew up with culture from all over. We, we grew up with, with music and, and different cultures from, uh, from Cuba, Puerto Rico, Brazil, you name it, we had it in Panama. And then, as if that wasn't enough, we had the, 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 the good fortune of, of being uh, brought to the United States and where, where did we settle but in the, in the city of New York City, the melting pot of the world. So you put the melting pot of the Caribbean in South America on top of the melting pot of the world in New York with with the funk experience and the different experiences that, that one finds there. And that's what makes us as diverse as we are. And it's not, it's coming from the heart. That, that's coming from our soul, coming from our life experience. And that's why Mandrill is able to touch on so many different bases. We can get down with the funk, get down with the Latin, get down with, 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 with uh, jazz, get down with Caribbean experience, African experience, and it's all, it's all real. What's the future, brother? The future is love. The, fu the future is love. You know, we, we're here to share love. Tonight's experience was exactly that. The love that the audience gives us just allows us to come back with so much more love. And that's what it's all about. The world, the world has to, to, to exist with love and more love. That's how we can get rid of all the crap that's out there. You know, just loving each other, sharing love, no matter race, color, creed, just love each other. That's what it's all about. And that's the message that we have for the new millennium. That's, that's what it's all about. I see you guys have added a new, uh, a new component. We had a young brother uh, uh, who did some rapping. Can you, you know, talk about that aspect of how he came to be part of the Mandro? The young brother's right here. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to meet him, but he, he could step into the camera right now. This is, this is uh, we know him as Raiz. His, his, his stage name, I'll have him tell you. His stage name is the One Sun Lion Ra. Uh, also, the one sun lion, right eye deaf, R A I D A I D E F, it means resist all ignorance, don't avoid intelligence, don't ever forget. Don't ever forget your history, you know what I'm saying? And um, my father is Lou, Uncle Rick, Uncle Carlos, Wolf, and um, it's just something that uh, it, when you grow up with it, man, you know, it's something you gotta do. And rap, it just happened to be the genre that naturally came into my field, you know, I came into its field, you know, and uh, they respected it enough. And I've been, we hooked up many times before this, so it, I grew, you know, I grew a little bit, and then they respected it enough, man, to say, you know, let's, you know, get down on the stage, man, you know, and what, what cuts are you feeling? So I said, well, they, you know, they want me to do Children of the Sun, and they said, if you're feeling any other cuts, you know, knock it out. So I've